Welcome back. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about specifically the power steering system when doing your HR swap. This video is gonna be similar to our uh, wiring video that we made. Um, in this video, we're gonna overview hopefully everything you guys need to know to get your swap in and have your power steering working properly. There are a few different ways that you can go about this. Um, some people on the groups uh, on, the, on the internet have actually gotten away with just keeping all the DE lines and hardware and rack and just using just the HR pump. Um, but if you're gonna put it in, in a factory configuration like my car here with the factory air boxes, you're not, actually not able to do that with the DE lines. For starters, uh, I'd like to mention that the power steering pump for HR and DE is the same pump and the lines and the brackets and all that bolt up just the same but on the HR it's actually a six rib and the HR uses one accessory belt to drive all the accessories so the DE has a five rib pulley you're not able to use your DE pulley or pump on an HR because it won't have enough ribs to run the accessory belt for the alternator and the rest of the accessories. But you could alternatively, in another parallel here, use an HR pump on a DE, it would just have that extra unused rib. But we're talking about the HR swap, so as far as the body part of it, if you're going to use the factory air boxes, you're going to need all of the hard lines from the steering rack forward from an HR because where it bolts to the pump right here, the HR line actually turns and goes down. Um, the DE, since there's no air box here and this reservoir is in a different location, it has more room here and that line actually comes up and makes a loop. It's about this tall. Now, if you're gonna keep the DE lines, you can do that, but you're not able to run a factory HR air box. A lot of the guys that are running like aftermarket intake, some of them go through to the front bumper, some of them stop right here. Depending on your configuration will determine how much you need to modify it. Some people have not had to move it at all, but a lot of people said they just took it and maybe bent it an inch or so out of the way and that it didn't interfere with their aftermarket intake. So if you're going to run the DE lines, just know it's not going to fit with the HR air boxes. You're definitely going to have to modify the line a little bit to run your aftermarket intakes, but it can and will work and will work well. Um, there's really no downside to it, but if you want to put it in a factory configuration, like we attempted to do as much as possible for my build here, um, you definitely need the HR lines from the donor car as well. Now I will mention, since we're t talking about the air boxes here too, I actually still have the factory DE radiator support in place on my car and the air boxes do fit with the DE radiator support. So you don't have to have a radiator support for an HR to be able to run HR factory air boxes. I haven't seen any problems with the intake air temps like we mentioned in season one when we were testing it at the track. It seems to do just fine without that duct through the support. It's drawing air right next to the radiator. It's cool air from the bumper. It's still no issue. So on my car, I have its original O3 DE rack. The rack is the one piece that you don't have to change. In my opinion, if you have a DE car, the DE rack doesn't have the electronic variable steering. So to keep things simple, it's almost better just to keep that rack. That is the only piece that you can leave if you're trying to put it in that factory configuration. You can keep your original rack and you'll need to swap all of the hard lines and all of the other pieces to the power steering system. That's much easier with the engine out of the car, so make sure that you pay attention to that before you put your HR in and kind of pre-plan for this because if you didn't and you were trying to do it with the engine in, it might be a little bit more difficult to get all the lines out and get everything back into place. So hopefully this clarifies uh, a lot of you guys' questions. If you have any more questions about the power steering for the HR swap, let us know in the comments. We'll be glad to help you. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, you're trying to get something funny to put at the end?